Oh, oh, my hair in the morning is awesome. Um, be kind. <laughs> Review number seven. Uh, the next one I'm planning on doing is on Dan and all of his awesome horror stuff that he's doing. Everything from his short films to the podcast to all the other assorted videos and his website. Very excited about that. Dan's a good friend of mine. Um, wrestling legend in the state of Georgia, very smart guy, and a guy like Jeff G. Bailey, who's kind of stepped away from wrestling and found out that uh, their genius doesn't just apply to wrestling, but to other things as well. I'm very excited to review that. And I'm going to eventually review Drew Blood's Western Pro Wrestling uh, series. I'm excited about that as well. So I thought I would knock out you monkey. Um, I thought I would do, uh, I'm almost in the process of finishing unpacking. Now you're saying, Steve, it's been a fucking year since you moved into your place. You're not completely unpacked. I'm sure a lot of people can relate. I still have, um, boxes, um, that I haven't unpacked, and one of them, I highly suspect, is filled with wrestling books, because I kind of labeled them. So, I thought what I would do is unpack this box, and as I pull things out, do a quick review. I thought it was a very nice way to kind of get a bunch of things reviewed at once. Um, and it's just going to be my freaking off-the-top-of-my-head reaction to the various books I see. Um, will there be other books besides wrestling books? I guess it's a possibility, but I have so many fucking wrestling books. I assume that this box is just one of at least two, though it's a very big box. Um, but I'm going to do an unboxing because last night in the P.O. box there was something else in there. So I need to, to catch up with these bitches because I'm putting out a lot of videos, but I'm getting a lot of things in the mail. Very excited about that, by the way. And, um... Not in this video, but in one soon, I'm also going to do a Patreon announcement about something I'm going to add at the uh, $25 level, since I'm getting people who are interested in that. Okay, um, anything else? Yes, the wrestling group I was going to do for my first shit show investigation has canceled their January show. So, I still want to do a shit show invitational, so if there's any group in Florida or Georgia that got the guts um, to put themselves up, it, the, the only rule is you have to be a show that's been around less than a year. Um, yeah, so send that shit to me. Also, an announcement about the t-shirt designs. Um, I've gotten a bunch into me, but you know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't want any of them, so I want more. Uh, send me more and more designs. And and I'm also going to let my kid in the mix, so we'll see what she can come up with as well. And she's finalizing the design of the Goodman statue. Statue? Statue. Anyway, let's do this unboxing. Let's get to the reviews. <laughs> I, I was told that this might happen, and happened it has. It's the Brody shirt that somebody else already sent me. Um, this is actually a good thing, because I had an idea once I was told that, oh my god, I think that the Brody shirt somebody else sent you, I sent you as well. So here's what I'm going to do with this Brody shirt. And I already got approval from the person who sent they sent me this second shirt. I have my big charity fundraiser every year that I do on President's Day. I play the same video game for 24 hours and I have a bunch of goals. This year, whoever donates the most money to it will get a prize pack including this badass Brody shirt, um, and there's going to be a bunch of other stuff added to that prize pack. So thank you to the person who sent this to me. Um, instead of 
just having two shirts for myself, as much as I wear this Brody shirt, and will no doubt wear it out, uh, I would rather this go to somebody else, and I already got their approval. So that's what we're going to do. All right, let's get to the unboxing. It's very cool, though. It's very cool that people thought of me. Bust it open. Oh, it's got a bunch of... No well, shit. Let's just start from the top. It's my yearbook from 1989. This would have been my junior year of high school. Um, not much of note. It's my senior year is where I really came into my own, and people signed my yearbook like mad. Uh, I would imagine I wasn't quite as popular. Well, let's see. Oh, there's super nice stuff in here. <laughs> um, oh, you can see my love of NWA. Somebody wrote that in there. Listen to a lot of rap music. All right. Um, let's get to what you really want to see. What the fuck did I look like junior year of high school? Do do do. I'm excited. Wow. This there I am. Apparently, when I get a haircut, in the, wow, look at that fucked up hair. Um, apparently, my hair, when it's cut and in the morning, looks a lot like it did in high school. That's me. Um, s s next to me in the picture is Brian Schatz, who's a motherfucking senator in Hawaii. Two motherfucking players! All right, next book. There's also my diplomas. Ah! Let's look at this shit. University of Hawaii. Huh. Blah, blah, blah. Diploma. I'm not sure what this one is. I think this one's the undergraduate one. And this one is probably... Yeah, this is the master's. So I've my that's cool. I have my master's degree, and I have my undergraduate one. Not very exciting. Let's sally forth. Okay, yeah, there's a bunch of crap ton of wrestling books in here. Oh, it's my school handbooks as well. Not sure why the fuck I kept these, but it's awesome. I'm taking out the stuff that I know aren't wrestling books. Oh, shit! Matsky Wildcats! Um, I, I, I lived in Texas briefly, and I went to Matsky Elementary. Oh, God. I don't even know what... Ten years, so I would have been in second grade, I guess? Wow, it was a big school, because there's at least five second grade classes. Steve Scarborough. Oh, shit. There I am, bro. Yeah, look at that big fucking hair. And the only other Asian kid I knew. I remember him. Naota. Miyashita, that is that is a pretty Japanese fucking name. That's my friend, and that's me. Yeah, we hung out together. We had these, like, muscle figures, I remember, we'd play with all the time. Anyway, Matsky Elementary. Wow. This is fucked up shit. All right. It looks like this is the last non-wrestling book in here, but it's in here, so I'm going to review it. Um, Perrine's Literature, Structure, Sound, and Sense. Um, I taught out of this book. When I taught uh, literature... And I also taught composition classes, and I taught business writing classes at Chattahoochee Technical College at one point. So this one is filled with short stories. Um, I should plow through this thing again. It's got a lot of, like, um, what would you call it? Um, canonized literature at that time. And it's pretty fucking great. I'm glad I have that, too. Awesome. All right, let's get into the wrestling books. How should I go? I'm just going to go from front to back to keep it fair. 
The Stone Cold Truth, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Boy, did this book suck compared to what it should have been, as a lot of WWE press stuff was. It wasn't very good for a guy who had such a storied career and was the biggest star in the business. It's pretty thin, in my opinion. And um, luckily, the one thing I did like was he didn't go into... A lot of stuff about his life before wrestling got involved. Sometimes pro wrestlers, especially when these books were coming out faster and furiouser, um, would kind of fall in love with their own, like, fucking high school football career and shit like anybody gives a fuck. Um, Stone Cold Truth, I would give this book a fucking C- minus at best. Mm -hmm. wasn't that great if you're a huge stone cold fan i guess you gotta fucking read it and you should fucking read it i'm a big fan of reading shit and there are some gems in there if i remember right i remember the thing about him um maybe when he was in memphis having to they would just he was so broke and poor he would just buy a fucking bag of potatoes and cans of tuna and that's all he would eat. And the potatoes, he couldn't even cook them because the place they stayed in was so cheap. I know we all fucking idealize Memphis, but boy, they were just some fucking cheap bucks, right? God, fucking Jarrett's and shit. And uh, he had to cut the potatoes and just eat them raw because he couldn't even have a way of cooking them. Fuck. I remember that shit. Wrestling's Greatest Moments. This was no doubt uh, probably a present that like my parents got me or something like that. It's that kind of book. Um, just a compilation of stuff. Oh, there's some, there's some great shit in here. That's like a little more obscure. Oh, what a rush. The road warriors win the national tag team titles. And it was just, it's just a list of, wow. I haven't read this book in a long time. Any book that's got, like, color pictures in the middle, I'm going to love. There's Terry Funk and Dusty Rhodes. How cool is that shit? Um, and it's just nothing but... It's about one, one thing that they want to talk about per page, roughly. Stuff like, how about a coconut? I'm sure that's about Roddy Piper and uh, Jimmy Superfly Snooka and... Whatever, and it's just nothing but a compilation of wrestling's biggest fucking moments. Including stuff like Samoa Joe's trilogy with CM Punk and Ring of Honor. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, ECW Press. Oh yeah, and whoever got it at Borders, so you know how long ago this shit was. Fucking probably worth a look, honestly. You could probably find this for a dollar or less. Um, wrestling's greatest moments. It seems pretty cool, actually, because it's not just, I just assumed it would just be full of shit. I probably read it as soon as I got it. I probably knew everything that they were talking about, which is why it's not sticking in my mind. But, you know, Eddie Gilbert drapes Russian flag over Bill Watts. So this isn't just the moments that everybody knows in the major majors. Um, this is just filled with cool ass shit. Oh, and it's divided into chapters. Like, this one's called The Turns. And so, of course, the number one is Shawn Michaels kicking Marty Jannetty through the window. That's pretty great. Oh, let's look at the table of contents. Chapter one, the greatest moments. Chapter two, the super cards. Chapter three, the territories. Chapter four, television. Chapter four, rock and wrestling era. Fuck. You know what? I'm going to give this book an A, just based on how it's fucking organized. And I'm going to read this again, so I'm going to throw this in a different pile. Fuck me. That's cool. That's what's great about these things. You discover shit. Wrestling at the Chase. Love these books. Love Mary Matejczak's stuff. He's a bit of a dry writer, just to warn you. But I remember loving this. You can see this thing is dog-eared and beat to fuck because I, I took it everywhere until I finished it. And I love old wrestling stuff. I love the way old wrestling posters look. There's Rocky Johnson. Rocky Johnson, by the way, was a big star in Polynesian wrestling when I lived in Hawaii and we used to go. And they said he had a brother, I'm sure, who was not really his brother, called Ricky Johnson, who was much skinnier and smaller. I'm going to do a deep dive at some point into those two guys to find out that story. But yeah, it's, there's pictures of Giant Baba in here. Wrestling at the Chase. Chase, I always had a dream of kind of doing a thing like Wrestling at the Chase where people would come and eat dinner and then they would watch wrestling at the same time. In like, you know, evening gowns and tails and like, you know, 
suits and all that kind of shit. Um, yeah, there's old Sam Mushnick and, of course, my man fucking Bruiser Brody. So, dope. Uh, Wrestling at the Chase, I would give it a B+. Plus. It gave you the stories, but Larry Matezak's not the guy who digs into dirt very much. He sort of hints at it and then doesn't dive into it. And fuck, we want that fucking dirt, don't we? Oh, speaking of dirt, Irvin Mushnick's Chris and Nancy, the true story of the murder-suicide and pro wrestling cocktail of death. Um, I see Benoit stuff has been coming up a lot lately. People using Benoit as a verb in fucking battle raps to the usual slate of wrestling fans going, I don't think it really happened how they said it happened in order to... Which is one of those things that just make you fucking hate wrestling fans. Am I wrong? Um, Irvin Mushnick's book. He's a guy who's very thorough about research. He wrote a book on the fucking Von Erichs that was really good. This one is sort of like meat and potatoes if you want the facts. But uh, I find, personally, the fucking Rendazzo book way more interesting and fascinating. Ring of Hell. A lot of people get mad at that book, but that book's got a lot of shit that I know were fucking true stories. And it's more salacious. This is the one, the Nuts and Bolts Facts one, though with the incredibly insightful and fucking um, eye-catching fucking cover. Look at that. True crime shit. I love it. Uh, I would give that book a fucking B. It is not the best of the Chris Benoit books, but it was one of the better ones, and I read them all that I could. Queen of the Ring! About this crazy bitch. You know who that is? No. You should fucking know who this is. This is fucking Mildred Burke. She was the most badass chick of all time. And she should be fucking celebrated. Moolah gets a lot of love. Because she was in the WWF slash E. And Mae Young rightfully does as well. And I think Killam Gillum should. Because she's got the coolest fucking name in wrestling history. Man or woman. Killam Gillum? Come on. But this Queen of the Ring book. Mildred Burke. Had a fucking husband. I don't want to fucking spoil it for you. But basically, he sends somebody to fucking shoot on her and fucking bust her arm. And she still fucking kicks ass. And it's a fucking great story of triumph. Though later on, uh, Mildred Burke, once she's out of it, if I remember right, she was like a hairdresser as well. And she was incredibly fit. She was like super muscular and stuff. And that was not done by women at that time. And so she was a big star, but then people kind of hated her and people were kind of scared of her. But I remember like one of the cool things is like gorgeous George basically would give her all this extra money to do his quaff. Usually only gorgeous George and his woman did his fucking hair very famous hair, but uh, he would fucking hook Mildred Burke up and pay her a lot of money as sort of an homage to her under the table. One of those cool stories. I remember this book. I remember it was really good. I would give it a B plus. Plus, it's a look into an era of wrestling that I fucking love. Uh, you know, there's people, uh, anybody intelligent who's been involved in wrestling loves the 70s and early 80s course. Um, this is an era much earlier than that, and I'm fascinated with that time as well, and I love reading about the little angles when I can find out about it. I'll tell you about some of those at some point. They're really cool. Uh, mankind, have a nice day. At some point, I probably have the paperback and lost it or it was gone, so I probably found it used in a bookstore, plus that way I could have a hardback. It is the wrestling book. Whatever I think about Mick Foley now, that he's this fucking whore and all this kind of shit, I cannot deny that Mick Foley um, wrote the definitive wrestling book that caused the explosion and the boom, and it's fucking still one of the best wrestling books ever. I think this book, along with Chris Jericho's first book, along with the Bret Hart book, along with the Gary Hart book, and uh, probably a couple of others that I can't think of off the top of my head, I would call A+. This is an A+, book. I will have no ill spoken of Have a Nice Day. It's fucking brilliant. It's fucking great. And I'm glad I found it used. I think this was the first book that I bought when I moved to Florida, actually. Uh, I remember there was this used bookstore that's not there anymore, and I bought this, and I was thinking of buying, they had a, I remember in a case, 
they had a, a a book full of apartment wrestling photos from like they were black and white and it was fucking incredibly expensive it was like in the hundreds of dollars and i was thought like oh that would be a cool one to have though i not really into that shit just for like posterity's sake and it's weirdly pro wrestling but it's not etc etc anyway have a nice day that's an a plus if you haven't read it i don't care how fucking young you are then you ain't shit fucking go fucking find it i'm sure it's available in digital form and every other fucking form and you can find it for free there's probably audiobooks where you can listen to mick foley's fucking weird fucking you know teenager from the simpsons fucking voice um yeah, have a nice day. Swimming with Piranhas by Howard T. Brody. I've read this book more than once because I'm fascinated with that part. And it also goes into the angle that I love with like Wild Side versus fucking Florida um, in uh, for the NWA 53rd anniversary, I want to say. That's how much I fucking read it and I know the story. And I, it, Bill Barons is mentioned in here a bunch of fucking times. So I talked to Bill Barons about the Howard Brody book and what he thought of it. Uh, it's badly written. Um, I, I did contact Howard Brody afterwards to say that I, you know, I read his book and then he was like, I hope that you too can survive swimming with piranhas. Like he was this fucking Buddha on the mountain. He was like, I'm just letting you know the deal. But he, you know, Howard Brody and I were in sort of contemporaries. We're running shows at the same time, dealing with a lot of the same kind of bullshit, some some same kind of liars, and maybe lying to ourselves as well at times. Um, so I definitely related to this book. Is it not? Brody is always a fucking kind of a, a mark, um, which is kind of strewn throughout this book. And plus the stuff about his romantic life is like really weird and off-putting it's kind of like when Lawler does that in his book where it's just like oh, but I guess it's honest in its own way uh, I give this book a C plus B minus nah C plus I hate I hate when people give two grades so I'm just gonna give one um do you do you need to read that book no though it is about you know sort of wrestling in a way that it's never going to be again yet I think everybody like like, I think David Marquez could really relate to that book. I, I think guys who promoted and ran shows in a certain way and had aspirations and all that other stuff. Plus, there's a lot of NWA stuff in there because Howard Brody was um, kind of a conniver, though he wouldn't see it that way. I see it that way. So. C plus. Inside Out by Ole Anderson. The um, Arn Anderson book is one of the worst wrestling books ever written. It is shit, and I know we all idealize Arn. That thing is fucking terrible. One of the three worst wrestling books going, and that's saying a lot. The Ole Anderson book is pretty fucking great. Scott Teal, usually when he helped dudes write stuff, at least he keeps it in a consistent narrative. Um, and Ole was definitely around. Look at these fucking pictures of the man. Oh, the fucking blonde. And, you know, of course, the, how most people would know him. This is their sort of Jim Crockett era shit. But Ole did it all. He booked, ran shows. He was a hard guy to work for. But he's a guy who understood talent, too. And even though he was an old-school, hard-scrabble guy and people don't give him a lot of credit for shit, he's also the guy who discovered the fucking Road Warriors, where definitely kind of moved things in the modern era. And guys who were particularly good and they were green as fuck and blah, 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 and he found a way to book them to prominence in a way that they've copied ever since with guys like Goldberg and the Ultimate Warrior and all this other shit. So Ole Anderson, though he was a hard scrabble, tough guy to deal with, who seemed very old school and set in his ways, still had visions. And that comes across in the book. I would give this book an A minus, which may shock you, but Ole, once you could get past that, it would be an A or even an A plus book, except there's so much bitter fucking shit in here. But some of that can be kind of fun, can't it? And the parts that are fun are awesome, and the parts where you're just like, oh my god, okay, boomer. Um, that <laughs> A minus, Ole Anderson. Especially if you're a booker or a fucking promoter, you should have that book. Hardcore History, the extremely unauthorized story of ECW, A plus book. I'm just fucking spitting it out there. Uh, I've read this book more times. It's even got dope shit like when it's done and ECW folds. It's got all the stuff from the 
bankruptcy fucking hearing. So you see how much money Paul Heyman owed everybody and shit like that. It's fucking fascinating. It's got all the money shit in there. How much he owed the lighting. Oh my God. And one night stand and then lasting impressions of the thing. It's, you can see I like earmarked a whole bunch of shit. I, I dog-eared shit so I could take notes and compile. By the way, somewhere in a file I have... All the notes that I took from wrestling books that I have read compiled in one file. And I used to look at that thing once in a while to remind me. Right. Yeah. Extre hardcore history, the extremely hard. There's also a documentary, which is okay. Uh, but this fucking book is amazing. Drawing Heat the Hard Way, another Larry Matezak book, right? The guy who wrote Wrestling at the Chase. He also wrote the Brody book. The Brody book, which is, I hope that's in here so I can review it. But if not, I'm sure it'll be in another box. But Drawing Heat the Hard Way is really fucking good. I think it's one of the few wrestling books that um, Gary Juster has read. Gary Juster, who's been around wrestling forever and a day. He's with WCW forever. He was a promoter on his own in the Baltimore area. And then he works with Ring of Honor. And he's sort of instrumental in keeping Ring of Honor alive behind the scenes. Not a lot of people know that. Anyway, uh... Uh, I remember Gary Jester thought the funniest page in here was they had a whole list of promoter excuses on why their show didn't do well. And one day I'll dig that thing out and you'll see how fucking promoters have not changed at all <laughs> in, as far as that shit goes. But this book is really great. I think it's, um, again, if you're a promoter or a booker especially, but if you're somebody who's interested in pro wrestling and how it really works and how the lessons from... 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago still apply today. I think this is one of those... I think any wrestling person worth the shit should ha probably have this on their bookshelf. And in that regard, I'm going to give it an A, even though, like I said, Larry Matezza can be a very um, dry writer. It's still very good. Nothing is as dry as that NWA History of the NWA book. Holy fuck. That is, the, that is the worst written book of all time as far as just keeping your interest. That thing, holy fucking shit. Is that boring as fuck? Andre the Giant, A Legendary Life, what a disappointing fucking book this is. I think that the fucking comic book graphic novel about Andre the Giant is ten times better than this piece of shit. The only thing that's good about it is when they go into the sort of, the deep dives into the stuff kind of pre-Hulkamania era. Like the Killer Khan thing, um, you know, and that kind of shit is great. And then, and then the sort of tragic stories of near the end of his career, which they try to paint as, ah, oh, isn't that funny that he shit all over Bad News Brown, literally, because he couldn't hold it together? But the whole thing struck me as really tragic, and it didn't really have a vision and a direction that it went, which you think would mean, well, at least it was honest, because then they would just lay out the stories. But they, they it was just sort of like a skipping stone over his career without really connecting the dots. And um, I just remember not enjoying it very much. I'd give it a D plus. And I love that fucking, I love, you know, he's a guy who was in the fucking territories and he was the biggest star of the territories. And so you think, I'm going to get to hear about all this different shit. And instead, it was just sort of an overview in one chapter of like, oh, here's what it was like going from territory to territory. Like, no, that's the shit I want to fucking hear about. Tonight in this very ring, part of the IWC that I talked about in my thing about Marcos was there were guys like there was bigger stars of the IWC. And one of them was Scott Keith. He wrote for a number of bigger websites, wrote for his own. And then um, tonight in this very ring is just a compilation of the fucking reviews he did of different shows. And then it was his sort of history of wrestling through his reviews. But he has... Like, the prelude is 30 years, one chapter, where he covers wrestling from 1963 to 1993 and just reviews a couple of matches in there to sort of bridge gaps. Like, Ivan Koloff versus Pedro Morales, like, blah, blah, blah. And the rest of it is just, I mean, Scott Keith, like anybody who's pretty good about writing about wrestling, all of them, with the exception of one or two people, are completely in love with themselves. Scott Keith is no exception. This guy fucking loves himself, right? Larry Goodman. Another thing that's really wonderful about Larry Goodman that people should appreciate 
and the reason he is a legend, and the reason he's going to be honored as such by multiple entities, is because Larry never puts himself ahead of wrestling. But Scott Keith most certainly does. Doesn't mean this is a terrible read, but I mean, as far as a book goes, it's just like a compilation of the shit that people could read online. And Scott Keith isn't particularly engaging. Though some, when he gets personal, he is. I remember um, when Owen Hart died, who was his favorite wrestler, in the way that Owen Hart died, he fucking kind of lost his love of wrestling. And he kind of goes into that in the book. So that's interesting to me. And he's very snarky and sarcastic. He's sort of the forerunner of the modern smart fan. And um, now how Scott Keith is, almost all wrestling fans are. So that has a sort of value in and of itself. I give this thing a C. Um, yeah. Huh. Men in Fitness Magazine. Always try to get abs. We'll see if I can do it in the next five months. <gasps> I've been looking for this book. Hall of Fame. The Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame series has a bunch of great shit. This one is the best of them all. It's called The Heels. By the way, look at that dope-ass fucking picture. Um... Yeah, there's Gorgeous George, there's fucking Randy Orton and John Cena and all that shit. This one has the greatest heel angle that I've ever heard about. This book is so amazing that I'm going to go into it in depth. A plus. I'm putting this one on the side to look at again along with Wrestling's Greatest Moments so I can find that moment so I can read from it instead of just trying to describe it to you. It is my favorite fucking heel fucking routine and it was done in like the fucking 50s 40s and 50s by the guy who's there claiming is possibly the first true heel you don't want to fucking hear that shit oh my god that book is so great i am i'm gonna do a whole separate fucking analysis of that book alone one of my personal favorites though it's not necessarily the greatest wrestling book of all time classy freddie blassie Listen, you pencil neck geeks. I remember this was the first WWE sort of affiliated book that didn't feel like a WWE shill book at all because Freddie Blassie was there way before. And it was a lot of the shit of his fucking wrestling career before he was the spangled jacket wearing, cane wearing, pencil neck geek yelling manager. But this guy adapted to New Era so well, and he was so close with the McMahon family that they're, I think they were just like, they probably had no nothing to do with this book, where they were just like, Freddie, tell your story, do your thing. Vince McMahon is really strange like that, where he can be a real fucking control freak and a real fucking weirdo. He's like, really, he, he's like Walt Disney or any of these people who are like really powerful and in charge of stuff that just have their own weird little foibles and they're very paranoid and, you know, they usually have like weird OCD things about them. But Fred Blassie, I think, was the exception, where he just fucking adored Fred Blassie. And so the book really comes across as his real story. It's all his, like, fucking sex stuff he was into and stuff he would put on his dick so he could stay hard. And it's just all these great stories about Fred Blassie. And then people who chimed in would tell these stories about Fred Blassie, too, of, like, yeah, he would just come up on him on the beach because he would, when he did his run in California and with Tolos and all that shit. Uh, it's a great book. I, I'm give, I'm putting it in the A-plus category just because I personally fucking adore this book so much. I've bought it multiple times. I've given it to people. I just fucking adore this book. Oh. I remember when um, Austin, uh, Xavier Woods, um, was going through his transition of like, I'm, I'm out of TNA and I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to get in the WWE, but I don't know if it's going to happen and blah, 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 blah. So he was around um, the wrestling school a lot and he would do PCW shows sometimes under a hood so he wouldn't get into trouble and that kind of thing great story for another time on Patreon um, but um, I uh, I remember I think I lent him or maybe maybe gave him this book just because I thought it was just sort of a good thing for him to see. And one of my favorite lines in here is Fred Blassie is kind of a nobody. He wrestled as sailor whatever the fuck and, and he wasn't really making it but their, their top 
top stars couldn't be at a show at this one particular wrestling show he was at. So the guy just literally looked around and said, like, who are we going to make? Because we have to start tonight. And then he picked Fred Blassie. And that was how Fred Blassie kind of started fucking accelerating. And then later on, Fred Blassie goes like, why did you pick me? And he goes like, you had something the other guys didn't have. And he goes, what's that? And he goes, arrogance. There's a lot here to learn, young wrestlers, about how to stand out in the right way. The greatest wrestling book written still, Playboy Gary Hart, wrestled, managed, ran promotions, thought of the best angles, was the best heel manager, in my opinion, ever. Better manager than Bobby Heenan? Yes. Better manager than Jim Cornette? Yes. Playboy Gary Hart. A plus plus. Motherfucking plus. I heard you can get this digitally fucking get it. This book always went out of print and it was a big deal. I have the, as soon as I heard there was a Gary Hart book, believe I fucking got one right away. This one and Hooker by um, Luthez, I was fucking obsessed with getting and somebody finally let me read Hooker by Luthez. They had like a manuscript kind of copy. Um, and then eventually I did get Hooker on my own. But best book, My Life in Wrestling, Playboy Gary Hart. I heard that his son, um, I wanted to bring his son in. I loved Gary Hart so much. I just wanted to bring his son in <laughs> to a wrestling show, even though I didn't want him to wrestle. I just wanted to be close. And getting to, that's a story that I told on Patreon about getting to ride a horse named Gary Hart. I'm missing out if you're not on fucking Patreon, especially when I announce what I'm going to do at the $25 level. But last but not least, Certainly not least in this book. God, this book, this box is sort of like most of my favorite wrestling books. Not all of them, but most of them. And this one, um, I loved Death of WCW so much. And I didn't want to read it. Why? Because fucking R.D. Reynolds was part of it. Who's the wrestle crap guy. And I hated the wrestle crap book so fucking much. After loving the website, the wrestle crap, crap book is one of the 10 worst wrestling books ever fucking written. It's a piece of shit. And it actually hurt my opinion of Barbed Wire Mike, who was the guy in charge at Lethal Wrestling, because he did a review of the book. And because him and R.D. Reynolds were friends, he fucking lied and said the book was pretty good. And he knew it was a lie. <laughs> and Mike still talked about that, like for reviews that he did afterwards. He was like, I fucking lost all credibility, but I'm telling Telling you this book is great you know that that but that was a bogus review but this book is great mike had to fight that the rest of his like fucking writing career and wrestling i didn't want to read this because i'm like already reynolds i'm like brian alvarez that guy's a known factor if you're not fucking watching his shit on youtube what the fuck are you doing wrestling people but rd reynolds is like oh that's gonna make it shitty no rd reynolds influence and making this thing fun and a kind of a well-written narrative or brian alvarez can be kind of dave meltzer-esque where sometimes they don't really capture the spirit of things as well as they should because they're more interested in the nuts and bolts facts and getting their opinions about it in and they both have fucking nasally voices god i fucking hate listening to them but i do because they're dave meltzer and brian alvarez but R.D. Reynolds' influence in this thing was exactly what it needed. It's the R.D. Reynolds' influence that was like, no, you have to just fucking write out Sid Vicious promos word for word and put them right next to each other so we can fucking just study them together. It's full of that kind of shit. The 10th anniversary book, I would recommend more than the old one. Why? Because they do this analysis of how, like, TNA has a lot of similarities and they just list all the shitty things that TNA did. All the shitty angles and stuff. Fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. Death of D WCW 10th anniversary. You don't need me to tell you, but I'm going to tell you A+. Plus. There's a reason I had it right next to the Gary Hart fucking book. That's for sure. Anyway, this has been Be Kind Review. The books. What's in the box?